I've heard you use this term, and obviously other people have as well, uh, about de-googling a, a phone. Can you explain why you'd want to do that? I, and I heard you say in other like videos and interviews and whatnot about um, there's like five things or you know problems with using a phone. And then I want to get to like which is your favorite, Android or iOS? And you've got some interesting views on that as well. So perhaps we can just start with like what is de-googling a phone and why you do that and how it affects your life. So if you actually have a normal, what I call a normie phone, a normie phone in my mind is an iPhone or a standard Google Android. If you have a normie phone, they have so much spyware in there. And if you actually research what the spyware is, for example, on the Google Android, the spyware is called Google services. If you actually look at the Google services, if you actually look at the API, for Google services, and, and there's an actual, it's actually my next video explaining how it's being spoofed, the, the Google services, and then you can actually see what the Google services are. And some of them are very, very invasive. Uh, for example, Safety Net is one of the Google uh, service APIs. Safety Net is supposed to be for your protection. Your phone is being protected from a cybersecurity point of view, as far as Google is concerned by not letting you load certain apps. But to run safety net, your phone has to actually report every app that you're using at any moment, the version number, the, uh, the, uh, the signature and all that. Uh, on top of that, every click you do, every click you do that goes to any URL has to be filtered out and sent to Google as part of safety net. Well, I mean, it doesn't take any genius to figure out what's happening here. So Google then can track every app you're using already. We know that. Google also knows every click you make. Now, they're in the advertising business, but it goes beyond that because, of course, they're tracking what you're thinking. If they can go to every click, I mean, what, what, what do you think is going to happen? So that is one of the specific things that happen on a phone. And that's, you know, that's uh, if you actually look at the safety net API, you will see some of this. And there's so much of that, that for another example is, is the geolocation or geofencing and nearby features of the Google API. That's part of the Google services. So in order for, and uh, more than that, uh, what is the other one? Exposure, exposure notifications, which has to do with, of course, contact tracing. All of this is part of the Google services API, which means, Google has so much control knowing your location and the actual technical explanation is that the phone tracks your location 24 seven. This is true of iPhones too, by the way. So they can track your location 24 seven and people are like disputing, disputing this because they said they can go into settings and turn off location. They don't understand the difference. They don't understand that Google can do anything they want since there's no restriction on that because they actually replace the system files with their own Google services. Now, why is a de-Google phone different? A de-Google phone removes all those Google services. There's actually no, nothing Google, uh, not even the notifications. There is no Google at all. You can't even install any Google app. Because there's no Google at all, there is no telemetry, there's no notifications, there's, there's no nothing. You, you can put notifications back, you can put some of these features back, but through a filter uh, using some other application uh, framework that will replace Google. But without okay. the Google services, first of all, there's immediate benefits. First of all, there is no Google ID. That's one of the worst things that you do on a phone. Everything you do on a phone has a Google ID. Everything you do on an iPhone has an Apple ID. On a Google phone, you never log in. Yeah, so in other words, your email, it's all track, it's all it's it's your identity, isn't it? That phone is locked to you as a person to do a credit card, whatnot. Is that right? And and you can't hide that. So another question, Android or iPhone? They're both bad. So So you would go like de Googled Android, Android phone, yeah. I probably would go Android. The the tracking on an iPhone is just so extreme for me. I mean, the 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 one that really bothers me the most is the client side scanning, where they can actually find out. They can say, they can run an algorithm that says, let's find all the phones with nude pictures in them. I, I mean, goodness, 
Do we need do we need somebody that with that capability? Yeah, I mean, it, it was. I mean, the I understood the uh, the idea of why they were doing it originally, and I won't mention it here just to keep the YouTube algorithm happy. But um, the the original reason seemed to have good intentions, but the unintended consequences of that were crazy from a privacy point of view. Because, like you say, if they can scan all your photos today, they decide this, but tomorrow they could decide to scan for other things. Like you said, yeah. The justification for for doing client side scanning. Uh, was that hey? It's it's hands off. The AI does the scanning, so we don't have to touch yeah. it. The problem is they could do that right now with iCloud. So why aren't they doing it on iCloud? So the the, the meaning it was a solution looking for a problem. In this case, why introduce such invasive technology when you could have just done it and scan iCloud? And so the only reason I could think of is they have bigger motives. They 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 wanted to do something else. I have some ideas of what that is from an AI point of view. I, I think uh, I think the phone will be able to sense our environment. That's that's what where this is going. What do you sorry? What do you mean by sense environment? Because the AI, meaning the camera, the the yep. sensors of the phone, can actually observe and look at situations. As an example, why couldn't a phone react and determine that there's a situation of violence? Maybe that's what they're shooting for. It, uh, it's scary sometimes when I make these kinds of predictions. <laughs> most of the time they come true they actually are thinking of that so that's uh, you know the uh, the uh, iphone has that neural network in it what what is the neural network for i obviously it's based on having the phone make its own decisions from ai you know by putting a neural network in there and looking at the environment doing doing something is it really just for facial recognition no the way that this client side scanning can work it can look at the camera and actually say, oh, I'm observing something that Apple wants me to observe. Not just a face, a behavior. The AI can determine who's unhappy, who's happy. They can actually look at his face and say, 57% of the people who who looked at this video were unhappy. They didn't smile. 70% laughed. Come on. I mean, that's how far it can go.